Father, we thank you for your work and your son and the hope that we have in him that we have been forgiven. The price, it all has been paid. We thank you for the work that you do in us that we would not be able to do without you. We thank you for the immense privilege of living under your grace for the glory of your name. And we pray in Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Well, please turn in your Bible to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Each week we take time in our service to celebrate communion together. Jesus instituted this with his disciples at their last supper together before his crucifixion. It's referred to as the Lord's table or communion, and this is a time for the Christian, the one who has placed their hope in Jesus Christ. This is a time for those who love Jesus to remember their Savior with intention. With intention. And so we take a cracker, and the men will pass that out here in a few moments, which signifies or represents Jesus' body in a small cup of juice, which is a picture for us and reminds us of his blood that was shed. And these are helpful, tangible reminders for us. And as Christians, we are called to intentionally remember Jesus and to proclaim his death until he comes again. This morning, as we prepare our hearts for the Lord's table, I want to direct our attention to a precious truth, and we're going to start in verse 28 and go through verse 32. Look with me at Romans 8, starting in verse 28. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God. To those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son. So that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. And these whom he predestined, he also called. And these whom he called, he also justified. And these whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? As we wrap up the year 2020 together as the body of Christ, we realize together that this year has been filled with many surprises, many difficulties, Many uncertainties. And yet in this passage, there is something that we know. Something the believer knows. Something that the Christian is certain of. Certain of. We know this. We know. We must know this. And it is that God causes all things to work together for good for the believer. And so every mishap of this year, every challenge, every inconvenience, every trial was divinely ordained. And not one of those things that has happened for you, Christian, was overlooked. It wasn't lost in the mix. It didn't fall through the cracks of God's good intention to use it for your good. We know that God causes all things to work together for good. God is using all things to accomplish his purpose in you. Verse 29 and verse 30, the gospel. Look what God did. Those he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Those whom he predestined, he called. Those whom he called, he justified. And these whom he justified, he also glorified. And then Paul says, what shall we say to these things? What could you say in light of these glorious realities of what God has done for the believer in the gospel? He 
He answers his question, but if God is for you, who can be against you? Nothing can undo God's good purpose and plan for his children. Everything in all of creation yields and is in fact used by God to accomplish good in his people. What shall we say then? Verse 31. If God is for us, who is against us? What won't God do? What lengths will he not go to in order to accomplish his purposes in his people? The answer is there are none. Look at verse 32 again. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, and that's all believers how will he not also with him freely give us all things? The point is, if God was willing to crush his son, to not spare his only son as the one only perfect atoning sacrifice, how will he not also give us all things? If he was willing to do this greatest thing of not sparing his own son, how much more can we have confidence that he will perfectly provide and care for us as the loving father he is in any situation? We can trust him. The gospel, the love of God in the gospel has incomparable implications on your eternity. But it also has profound impact on your moment-by-moment -moment life right now, from the most seemingly mundane things in your life to the most tragic events and intense hardships. God is for you and is using all things. Not one of these things is wasted to accomplish his good purpose in you from an item you need for dinner at the grocery store not being there to an unfavorable doctor report. Everything, everything, we know everything is being divinely ordained for the Christian's good, for God to accomplish his good purpose in us. And you remember what follows, nothing can separate us from his love. He will not leave you from the highest peaks in your life to the lowest depths. He will not forsake you. Nothing can separate you from his love. And this wonderful reality must invade every happening in our lives. And this is why the Christian can give thanks in all things. Because we know God's using it. It won't be wasted. Because a sovereign, loving, good God, who is also righteous and just, did not spare his son. He poured out his wrath that you and I deserved upon him on the cross. He did not spare his own son so that we might become sons and daughters. All things. All things. What a hope we have. An otherworldly hope as we enter into 2021 with more uncertainties in our mind than probably what we entered into 2020 with on our mind. We can navigate these things with thankfulness and with joy and with praise and with worship because we know the same God who did not spare his own son for us will freely give us all things. To be able to worship him, to be able to honor him, to be able to please him with whatever this next year holds. Do you know Christ this way? Do you know the love of God in Christ? And if so, if your answer is yes, then we invite you to partake with us this morning of the bread and the juice, and to remember with thankfulness God's willingness to not spare his son to reconcile you to himself. If you do not know Christ this way, there is nothing we want more than for you to know Christ this way. 
we, we would plead with you to know Christ this way. And we'd love to share more with you about this gospel, about this good news of who Jesus Christ is and what he has done. And we'd ask you to speak with any of the pastors this morning. But we'd also ask you to not take the bread and the juice this morning, as this is a time that is specifically for believers to remember our great Savior to do so together. So men, come serve us now. You can take the bread and the juice and take that when your heart is prepared. And in a few moments, I'll come up and we will pray together.